legal in Canada, and to talk about that with me now is Matt Bottomley. He's a senior analyst, or I don't know if you're a senior analyst yet. Whoa! I just I just gave no, you that a, sounds good. I, I just gave you a, a promotion. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Matt's a uh, equity analyst with uh, Canaccord Genuity. Matt, welcome back. Good afternoon. Uh, okay, Matt. Let's start off with uh, in terms of the opening of the OSC online, the Ontario uh, Cannabis Store, not OSC, OCS. OCS. Boy, that's confusing. Um, who, in your view, from Canaccord, do you think is going to be able to perform the best in the context of these government-sponsored uh, agencies? Well, I think scale is important. Uh, purchase orders from all the provincial regulators is going to be important. So, um, you know, I think the leaders in the space are, are the large cap now, I guess you could call it, companies like the Canopies, Aurora's, Afria's. Uh, Tilray is definitely in there. I think uh, CanTrust is, looks very attractive as well. They've, they've got for their size of their cultivation uh, quite a large number of purchase orders uh, throughout the country, so they're doing well. I think that getting into these stores or onto these online platforms as a, as a starting point is critical in order to start building brand equity because as far as I can tell, it's anecdotal, but just sort of being around this summer and walking around Toronto and other places in Ontario, Tweed has their name absolutely everywhere, and I think in an anecdotal way they do have some brand awareness. Mm -hmm. But other than that, people are sort of learning as they go and there's no brick and mortar in Ontario so you you know you, you pull up this website which we were looking at just a few minutes ago and mm -hmm. uh, all the packaging kind of looks the same all the you know all, all the brands are sort of new brands for the most part so I think that um, definitely getting is a breadth of purchase orders from from all the provinces will, will determine winners and winning brands what I did notice actually um, this morning just going through the website was there was a and again I don't know if, if each you know skew or each unit that you see on the website is proportional maybe some companies have only a limited number of SKUs, but they have a ton of supply of them. Right. But very, very back of the envelope, it seemed like Aurora had a very dominant presence on this website. They had them and Hexo were the two leaders in terms of the oil offerings. Mm -hmm. I think it was Aurora and only a couple of others on the pre-rolls. And I think individual SKUs, even for dried bud, they had the most. And that includes, of course, the, the med relief products as well. So that, on the, at least from what I could glean, just, you know, take it out with a grain of salt, uh, yeah. back of the envelope, that's who seemed to have a very strong presence on the on the website this morning. Right, they're showing 50 SKUs on the, can on the Ontario Cannabis website here. And uh, it's really interesting that almost all of them are THC dominant. It's very hard to find anything that's got a, a high CBD count, which is interesting because I guess the recreational aspect is perceived to be driven by THC and not CBD which is viewed as more therapeutic medicinal. Yeah I mean I think you know in very simple terms I would agree but you know getting a good one-to-one -one ratio getting something that's a high CBD like high CBD vape pens in many medical markets uh, and even medical markets that now have recreational going in are, are very popular uh, you know you don't have to go insane by smoking you know the the, the highest THC amount. I've, I've heard, I've heard some anecdotes as well from other producers who say, you know, everyone's thinking you have to have this like 90%, you know, you know, most potent THC out there in order to get market share. But at the end of the day with alcohol, you're not looking to get some sort of 350 proof thing that's just going to absolutely ruin your night. So I don't think, you know, having the most THC is necessarily, you know, a critical factor, but a breadth of offerings is. And, and clearly, right. to your point, most of these are, are THC uh, driven. Yeah. Um, do you see any companies that are you feel are going to outperform some of the other ones specifically? Are there any names that you would feel comfortable putting forth as probably a premium opportunity relative to the pack? Sure. Uh, well, I think a couple things. One is, and, and, and this is not using an anecdote from looking at the website, which I think is useful, and we'll see how that website evolves. But just looking, at, again, going back to these purchase orders, I think it's very clear that um, that Canopy is going to have the largest reach in Canada. Uh, so will Aurora. I think uh, Aurora uh, and, and Afria, for that matter, have, you know, they're basically everywhere. So the question is, how are their brands going to stack up? So I think, um, you know, my view would be, and I haven't seen yet, I know there's some news reports, but I haven't seen a live shot of inside of these stores like in Quebec where there's brick and mortar. I would like to see how, how much of a presence one LP has over the other because it's very restrictive. But I definitely think, you know, those three companies are, are the leaders in the pack for sure. I think Tilray's probably in that group and I expect them all to perform well. Relative to valuation, I actually would probably pick Afria as number one because Afria, uh, in my view, is definitely going to have a top three or four market share, at least to start. When you just look at how many provinces they're in, what their capacity is, their ability to get products to market, they're going to be number three, number four, no problem. And they have a $4 billion valuation. All of their most immediate peers, some of them are as high as $20 billion now. I haven't looked in the last five minutes, so don't hold me to it. I know right. these things move around. Right. So that so relative to execution and valuation, I, I would definitely put my, uh, put my money on a free as we sit today. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so it's really, it's... Uh, 
perhaps not surprising that you picked three of the companies who were among the very first to be in the industry and have had the longest time to sort of get their act together and yeah. understand the market and everything. Well, it takes time to build these facilities. Initially, when I first started looking at this space, there was maybe 30 producers. I think initially there was like 12 that started, but there was like 30 producers. And I would watch it and it would take like a month or six weeks to go from 35 to 36. Mm -hmm. Now every Friday there's 20 new ones or whatever it is. Right. Do you think now that recreational market is active and, and live in Canada, that there's going to be a shift from the valuation of these companies on a speculative future value towards actual financial performance in Q1 and Q2 as these companies start to report their performance as a result of the recreational market? It will become increasingly more relevant and then increasingly more important after that. I think, um, I don't know on timing for that. There's a lot of, you know, the, the next sort of recreational uh, speculation is going to be medical international markets. That's going to be the next thing that people are sort of buying for and they, are, they obviously are today. So I think that there's some risk you know, second half of 2019, when a couple of quarters go through, um, when everyone for the most part is EBITDA negative, it's easy to just sell the story for the future. When companies start, you know, penetrating that break-even platform uh, and start getting five, 10, who knows, $50 million of EBITDA, that's when people will say, well, wait a second. If, you know, I take a bear case scenario and, and put modest growth on that, you know, the multiples might look a little wonky. So it's gonna become increasingly important, but not, not today. I mean, this is not turning of a switch in my view. This is a dial, you know, it's moving a dial slowly and the Canadian government is doing very slowly. We don't have brick and mortar in many places. We don't have product breadth in, with, when it comes to vape pens and edibles yet. Um, we might have websites that are selling out. We'll track that as it goes. So um, yeah, I don't think that the next quarter, which by the way, won't even have this in it anyways, right. uh, will matter. And I think even the first couple of quarters, it might be a gimme uh, in investors' mind. And lastly, I'll say, actually is, is what's driving it a lot now is just the scarcity of investment opportunity in the U.S. So outside of fundamentals, we're having uh, more and more companies list on, on the NYSE and NASDAQ. There's, right, I think with Aurora in, in there now, there's only four of them. So there's a scarcity of, of investment vehicles, excuse me, <coughs> if you want to invest in the Canadian licensed producers. Um, and then you have all of these strategics like Constellation and the like that might drive the sector higher. So I think those headlines are going to matter more in the next six months to a year than what these companies do fundamentally. But eventually you got to have that underlying cash flow or EBITDA to justify anything, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Okay, so this was the last visible and known value catalyst that could be considered mm -hmm. a sector-wide catalyst. Uh, what do you see as the next potential sector-wide catalyst that will yeah. continue to drive value into the market? I think this is a, still a catalyst-rich environment. So I think retail licenses uh, in, in various, uh, you know, we have some, some points now in, in Alberta and BC, but certainly in Ontario. So uh, presumably these licensed producers were kind of left out in the cold when it comes to the licenses that the Ontario government's going to give out for retail. They said, you know, LPs can only have one per, and I think you have to attach it to a cultivation. But it's a little tricky to me with respect to what is what is an, what defines an LP. If the LP is just your legal entity that's registered with Health Canada, well, any of these guys, Canopy, can have joint ventures outside of that entity, and that's not technically an LP, and they can go in for licensing. So I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how to you know, paper that up, but I would think that there still is potential catalyst for these guys to get penetration into Ontario retail. Um, I think just more clarity on who's selling what and where because a lot of the press releases we've seen have been the first purchase order or the initial kickoff. We're going to see if, you know, I expect obviously Hexo to be dominant in Quebec, but we're going to see which producers get market awareness in, in, in which provinces. And, and, and I think that as soon as uh, the provinces allow for more public disclosure when it comes to who's buying and, and what amounts, uh, that's a catalyst. Uh, and then the one we mentioned already is just other strategic sniffing around between consumer brand products, between tobacco. Uh, we saw that rumor uh, with Afria last week, uh, between uh, yeah, you know, big alcohol, uh, pharmaceutical. Uh, these are all strategics that, you know, if there's a, you know, a, a breath out there that someone thinks someone that one of these strategics is going to come in, we see these, you know, the stocks go nuts. Now, I'm not saying there's fundamental underpinning to that, but it's another reason why I wouldn't bet against the sector in the next, you know, six months to a year. Mm -hmm. So some of the companies have really caught a tailwind and their valuations are, as you say, upwards of $20 billion in some mm -hmm. cases. Other companies who seem to be in the same sort of similar, they look like those other big companies in large part, but they haven't caught that tailwind. And so there's, you know, you look at it and you think maybe there's some opportunity. I'm thinking particularly of a company like Wayland or formerly Marican mm -hmm. that had sort of, sort of a regulatory cloud over it. 
now in the past is as evidenced by the fact that they've cleared a prospectus with the OSC, mm -hmm. and now they've got this huge runway of growth opportunities. Is that a, a name that you're following? Well, I'm research restricted on them today, so oh, I, I can't, but we, we do cover them. Um, but I can speak more broadly to, uh, you know, like Organogram or, or Hexo or Cantrust. These are names that are, uh, you know, they're not low, you know, they're, some of them are upwards of a billion dollars or more, but when you, to your point, when you look at the infrastructure they have built, when you look at the amount that they're selling through the, uh, you know, Ontario cannabis stores or in other places, they're not that, you know, far behind, you know, like a canopy. They're certainly not anywhere close to the scale of a canopy, but in terms of what they're doing today, um, they're not, you know, 20 times behind or, or 10 times behind. So you really have to look, in my view, to international optionality. I think canopy and, and some of the other names I mentioned absolutely have the, the number one um, spot when it comes to optionality in foreign markets. We've seen, you know, the UK legalize uh, initial, their initial legislation for, for medical. Uh, the German re-tendering process is due in early November, and a lot of these LPs will be uh, w w will be in that. Uh, Latin America is getting a lot more uh, news flow these days. You've seen many of the producers uh, invest down there. So I think that's the big way to look at it is unless you have an international uh, delta, unless you have an international optionality that's significantly better than your peers, there shouldn't be these $5 billion deltas and absolute dollars between a lot of these companies, mm. I think. Mm. Interesting. All right, Matt, we're going to leave it there for now. Thank you very much for coming in today, and we'll uh, come back to you again soon. Sounds great. Mm -hmm.